Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to prove or show um, if two lines are either intersecting parallel or skew lines. Okay, So if you're given two lines I'm going to show you how to investigate if they're either intersecting parallel or skew. Okay, uh, skew are basic, So skew lines are basically two lines which are non-parallel and non-intersecting lines. So that's what I mean by skew. So skew implies non-parallel, non-intersecting lines. So over here, so I hope you can see this. So intersecting, parallel, and skew lines. So let's take a red pen, underline this. Okay, so remember the term skew, skew means non-parallel, so they're not parallel and they're not intersecting. Okay, so not intersecting, not parallel. Okay, so in order to do the analysis, so I hope you can see that. So in order to do the analysis, if you've got two uh, uh, equations, so these two equations of the line are given to you. So if you're given uh, two equations, so let's say we're given two vector equations of the line, okay, or two equations of the line, okay, so they don't necessarily need to be in vector form. They could be in parametric or Cartesian form or either. So if you're given two equations uh, nonetheless. So if we have two vector equations, for example, first one I'm going to call L1. So if that is R equals A1, uh, A1i, okay, plus B1j plus C1k plus lambda into a2i plus b2j plus c2k and if I have uh, another line I'm calling L2 so if that's given also r is equal to a3i plus b3j plus c3k plus mu into a4i plus b4j plus c4k okay so just to remind you remember these uh, vectors here so the vectors alongside the lambda and mu so the vectors alongside the scalars these are the direction vectors and remember the vectors without the scalars alongside them these are the position vectors of fixed points on your lines, okay? So in order to check firstly whether they're intersecting parallel or skew, the first step is, so let's call this step number one, the first step is to check whether they're parallel, okay? So um, let me show you how to check whether these two lines are parallel. To check whether they're parallel, if I take this red pen, First, look at your direction vectors, so the vectors alongside the scalars. And remember, for them, for the lines to be parallel, if one of the direction vectors is equal to a scalar of the other, that implies that the lines are parallel. So let me repeat again. So if one of the direction vectors is a scalar of the other, that implies that your two lines are parallel. So let me just write this down. So two lines are parallel if, and you can start off with any one of these direction vectors. So let me start off with this one here. So A2i plus B2j plus C2k, that is equal to a scalar, so I'm going to use t as my scalar, into the other direction vector, a4i 
plus B4 J plus C4 K. Okay, so if one of them, one of the direction vectors is a scalar of the other, your two lines are parallel. Okay, however, if they're not parallel, that implies by logic that they're skew or intersecting. Okay, so if they're not parallel, go to step number two. They are either skew or intersecting lines, and we need to. Um, find out which one which one it is whether they're skew or whether they're intersecting lines in step number two we equate these two so we equate these two so we equate l1 to l2 so l1 is um, a1i plus b1j plus c1k plus lambda in two a2i plus B2J plus C2K. So we equate L1 to L2. So L2, so I hope you can see this. So L2 is, um, looking over here, so it's A3I plus B3J uh, plus C3K. So let me expand this. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Okay. Um, plus, so let me continue here. Mu into and A4i plus B4j plus C4k. Okay, so equate L1 to L2. And in the next step, so in step number uh, three, what you need to do is you need to group the i, j and k components on both sides. Okay, so group i, j and k components on both sides so what do I mean by this so on the left hand side if I group the I components so I have two of them here on the left so I have a1 plus a lambda a2 so plus a lambda a2 let's keep that unit vector I outside like so okay so I hope you can see that uh, plus, if I do the same with the J components on the left, so I have B1 plus lambda B2, keeping the J unit vector outside, plus, if I do the same with the K components, C1 plus lambda C2. So C1 plus lambda C2, keeping the K outside, okay? So that is equal to, so let me continue here. You do the same on the right hand side. So you have two I components here. So A3 plus mu A4, keeping the I unit vector outside, okay? Plus uh, two J components, so if we group them, B3 plus mu B4, so B3 plus mu B4, keeping the J outside, plus doing the same with the K components, C3 plus mu C4. So C3 plus mu C4 with K outside. So that is step number three, group the I, J and K components on both sides. And in step number four, what you need to do is equate the coefficients of i, j and k on both sides. So let me write that down first. So equate coefficients of i, j and k on both sides. 
Okay, so if I start off with the I components, okay, if I equate the coefficients of I on both sides, so if I take a red pen, I have a coefficient here on the left, A1 plus lambda A2, and the coefficient of I on the right hand side is A3 plus mu A4. So A1 plus lambda A2 is equal to A3 plus mu A4. Let me call that equation one. Okay. If I do the same with the J components, so if I equate those J coefficients on the left, B1 plus lambda B2, so I'll take a green pen to highlight that. That is equal to, on the right, B3 plus mu B4. So B1 plus lambda B2, that's equal to B3 plus mu B4. Let me call that equation two. And finally, if I do the same with the K unit, uh, vector coefficients. So I've take this black pen. On the left, I've got C1 plus lambda C2. So C1 plus lambda C2. That's equal to, on the right, C3 plus mu C4. So C3 plus mu C4. Let's call that equation three. Okay. So that's step number four. Equate the coefficients of I, J, K on both sides. Okay, now in the next step, so this is step five, what we need to do is we take any two equations, so just take two equations, any two, and solve simultaneously to work out lambda and mu. So take any two equations and use only those two equations to work out lambda and mu. So let me write that down. So take any two equations and solve simultaneously. So solve simultaneously uh, to find lambda and mu, so to find the scalars. Okay. And in the last step, step number six, okay? So you take any two equations and use those two equations only to find lambda and mu. And in the last step, what you need to do is you put the values of lambda and mu into the equation that you haven't used, okay? So that you haven't used uh, out of the three, okay? And once you put the values of lambda and mu into the equation that you haven't used, if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, your lines are intersecting. However, if the left-hand side does not equate to the right-hand side, your lines are skew. Okay? So let me first write that down. So put lambda and mu values into the equation which was not used in step number five, okay? And let me have two bullet points. So, for example, if you used equations one and two to find lambda and mu, in step number six, you need to use equation three to put your lambda and mu values in, okay? So, and if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, so if they match, that means that they're intersecting lines. So, intersecting lines. However, if the left-hand side does not equal to the right hand side, that means that you have skew lines. Okay. So that is the, those are the steps in order to show whether um, you have intersecting parallel or skew lines. 
Now, supposing that you have intersecting lines, so if you have intersecting lines, so in step number six, if the left does equal the right hand side, in order to find the position vector of the point of intersection, so to find the position vector, you can either put your lambda or your mu value into either of the first two equations. So if you use your lambda value, put it into L1, and if you simplify, you're going to have the position vector of your point of intersection. You can indeed use your mu value and put it into L2 to find the position vector of the point of intersection. That should give you the same result because the point of intersection is unique. Okay. So let me make that a note. So note to find point or the position vector so to find the position whoops so position so that's meant to say position vector of the point of intersection so PR up POI is point of intersection um, put either lambda or mu into the lines L1 or L2 and then simplify okay so once you put your lambda or your mu value into either the line L1 or L2 and if you simplify you have the position vector of the point of intersection okay so that ends this video those are the steps um, I hope you found this video helpful in the next video, we'll do some examples of how we apply this method to investigate whether the lines are going to be intersecting, parallel or skew lines. Okay, so I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.